Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and The Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and Restless Kyle and Summer begin a new chapter. Tracy supports Ashley and Diane takes a new job. Summer bumps into Kyle at Crimson Lights, where they discuss their divorce, which is final today. Summer says they've made many moments with Harrison and will now pour their love into him. When the conversation turns to Kyle's career, Summer assumes Jack has promoted him co-CEO again. Kyle admits that the position has gone to his mother. Summer, taken aback, wonders how he feels about his mom stealing his job. Kyle expresses happiness for his mother. Summer believes he should tell her the truth. Kyle admits there's a lot of disappointment. If it's the job he was meant to have, he'll be prepared when it comes his way. He believes his parents get along well and are exactly what Jabo needs right now. Jabo needs a singular vision right now. Summer remains skeptical. Summer admires how Chance looks in the suit she provided him. Chance informs Kyle that she has become his personal shopper as he broadens his stylistic preferences. Kyle teases him as he goes away to get coffee. Somebody's got a crush. Summer denies everything and says to her ex, You can stop now. Kyle reassures her that it's fine if it's more than friendship. It's good to see you smile like that again. Summer wonders if he has been smiling. Kyle said it's better than it has been. They've always wanted each other to be happy. And this doesn't have to change. At Jabo, Jack presents Diane the new statement announcing her new role as co-CEO. She can't believe she's stealing her son's job. Jack assures her that she earned this. Diane knows that despite what Kyle says, he is hurting since he did not get promoted. So, I'm hurting for him. Jack thinks Kyle is all right, but Diane noticed the gleam in his eyes. Losing my work and summer are too much. Jack claims he had adequate opportunity to present his case. He's delighted his son understood he had more to learn. What message will they send to Jabo and their son if they make these changes now? They must accept him at his word. Diane agrees that what he is saying makes sense. They're kissing and canoodling when Kyle walks in. Diane tells Kyle that they were talking about him. Kyle assumes they intend to strike the ground running and hold a meeting. Jack has to deal with something first before exiting. Diane asks Kyle for the truth. Kyle reminds Diane that she must let this go, and he has. He will learn a lot while waiting and watching. This is your job. You're going to crush it. Diane hugs him. He has a mournful expression over her shoulder. Claire asks Nikki, Is this a nightmare? While in her room. Nikki informs her she is awake and does not have to feel fearful. She wanted to know how she was and what she could do. Claire wonders why she'd want to help her when she still has every reason to dislike her. Nikki agrees. She has every cause to despise her. But I don't. What happened to her was terrible and unforgiving. You can't help but be a product of your upbringing. She sighed. Aren't we all broken? Do you want to get better? Claire inquires. Are you kidding? She's concerned about finding the strength. Nikki assures her they're all strong. Sometimes you just have to dig deep to find it. Claire says she feels strong at times, but she sometimes worries about disappointing everyone else. Nikki informs her that Cole and Victoria will be there for her. Claire needs someone to look her in the eyes and answer the question, Nikki tells Am Claire I inherently she isn't evil. wicked? You were born perfect and innocent, but an evil force got in the way. The reality is, we saved each other's lives, which is a good thing. She asks her to describe her daily routine there. Claire informs mom she attends group and craft lessons, and she has a new privilege. She can go on walks to pediatrics to meet the children. She describes the heartwarming interactions between children and their parents. Sometimes I'm jealous. She had a long-standing desire to start a family. Her aunt said she was everything she needed, but she wasn't. Wishing didn't change anything, so she stopped wishing. Claire admits that she sometimes wonders what Victoria was like as a child. Nikki says it's a big question. Claire believes Nikki protected her from things that could harm her. Nikki isn't sure, but Victoria adored her horses. She was an ardent reader. 
She also liked painting, going to the museum, and spending time in her art studio. Claire wants someone to smile when they hear her name, just as Nikki does with her daughter. You were so very alone, weren't you? Nikki muses. Claire nods. It was all she knew, and Jordan was all she had. If she had a loving mother, she explains that with Jordan, she had to be good and not create a fuss. Everything may have turned out very differently. Jordan used to rant at her about how unfair life is and how she isn't special, but she was. I was Victoria's baby. Nikki hopes they could go back and have another opportunity. But all we have is the here and now. So we have to find a way to break free of the past. Claire is unsure if she can. When Victoria looks at me, she sees a baby that she thought had died. When I look at you, I see all the horrific things Jordan forced me to do. When you look at me, what do you see? Nikki appears doubtful. Claire says, just as I expected, she cries. Ashley arrives to Tucker's suite and wonders what he said below about her inability to commit. I understand what you are doing. I understand what you're attempting to do. Tucker accuses her of attempting to incite his anger. Ashley believes this is a game. You are gaslighting me. Tucker wonders what he has to gain. Ashley claims it is retaliation. He wants her to suffer. Tucker feels like she never really knew him. I have never been motivated by the desire to cause harm to people. And never on someone I love. Ashley tells Tucker that he uses that phrase to dominate her. He reminds her that he would have done anything for her. All he wanted in exchange was commitment and to be her partner. She can't do that for people who don't have her DNA. He's upset, but he'll move on, and so should she. Ashley claims that he is now telling her she is obsessive. Tucker claims she is. He encourages her to go to the cafe in Paris and interrogate the wait staff about what transpired that afternoon. I think you'd be surprised what they tell you. Ashley walks out. Ashley enters the Abbott home and recalls the violent episode in the Paris cafe with Tucker. She sits and shakes her head, imagining the situation just as he described it. Get out of my head. I know what I know. Tracy then appears. She says, what's going on? And offers to assist. Ashley complains to her sister that Tucker is acting as if the disagreement is usual. He tells her she's got it all wrong. Tracy questions what he stands to gain by gaslighting her. Ashley wonders if he is retaliating. Tracy admits he's no Prince Charming, but she never thought of him as the kind of man who would remove butterflies' wings. Is he? Ashley shakes her head. I've never seen him act violent with anyone. Chance informs Summer at Crimson Lights about the office dynamics at Chancellor Winters between the older and newer employees. Summer encourages him to spice it up. She knows how much time has passed, but she still has a lot to say. Chance suggests, Let's get lunch then. Sharon walks in as they are conversing and laughing together. They fall silent, and Summer exclaims, it's Geno City's newest mogul. Sharon believes they should have attended the launch. Maria made it a night to remember. Chance is enthusiastic, and Summer enjoys the fact when that Summer she named leaves the firm to take a phone cast. call. Sharon asks Chance, What's new with you? He's still adjusting to his new work. Sharon inquires, Are we good? Chance says yes, and they handle it quite calmly. Sharon assures him that he is welcome to come for coffee and can bring any girlfriend he wants. Chance appreciates her honesty about her priorities. Sharon says now that they're friends again, she has a favor to request. Chance responds, name it. Sharon says, don't get all awkward around me. Chance teases that he used to be so slick and admits that they had a good time. Sharon believes they are extremely fortunate to have their friendship. Summer returns and says she needs to get back to work. Chance offers to walk her to her car. Sharon, it was really good to see you. Sharon responds, good to see you too, and then watches them go together. Claire apologizes for crying in her room, but Nikki insists that she must be able to feel things in order to cross over. She admires her ability to relax herself. Claire explains that she had to handle things on her own. Nikki clucks that this isn't the life she was meant to have. Claire understands that now. 
She needs to recuperate and feels Nikki should leave. Nikki gets her coat and purse before leaving. Nikki pauses outside the door before continuing to walk away. In the park, Nikki is alone. She digs into her purse, takes out the flask, and grimaced. Ashley invites Tracy at the Abbott house to pretend to be writing one of her novels. They create a narrative about the Lothario and the heiress. He wants her absolute loyalty. Ashley wonders, why would I do this? This is not who I am. Why should I make something up? Tracy fumes. If Tucker is gaslighting me, he'll wish he hadn't when I'm done with him. Ashley throws her arms around her sister. I love you. What would I do without you? Tracy tells her that she will never find out. Ashley tells her about Tucker's notion that she can't commit. Tracy wonders how they will receive the facts. Ashley responds, I know of a way. Kyle, Jack, and Diane meet at Jabo to discuss employee happiness. Diane hopes to incentivize product creation. Every job is important to our success. Kyle wants to strengthen the intern program. Jack brightens as he realizes everything is coming together. He steps aside to take a call. Nikki approaches him at the park and says, I'm in trouble. I need help. Next on The Young and the Restless. Victor is concerned about Nikki's decision-making. Abby sets her sights on a new venture, and Jack stands up to help Nikki. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.